Yeah. Hey, everybody. I see a lot of super familiar faces and lots of new ones. So that's super exciting. Um, I just wanted to say hi real quick. Uh, my name is Christopher Breedlove. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm the director of Burners Without Borders. I've been doing it now for about four years, though I've been involved with BWB in a whole bunch of different capacities for 13 or 14 years now. Um, Kind of just uh, a, a quick overview, you know, for those of you who don't know, uh, Burners Without Borders started in 2005 after Hurricane Katrina. Basically, Hurricane Katrina happened while uh, Black Rock City was happening. And the, the really quick story is, is that people were super inspired to immediately do something. And so they didn't even know what they were going to do, but a bunch of people just left Burning Man with their tools and their supplies and went down to New Orleans. And over the next nine months, what they found out was, is how to be useful. And one of those things to be useful was actually uh, doing over a million dollars worth of demolition work for free for the local communities. And it was this really inspiring moment because for the first time it was, uh, you know, 2005 was a time where like crowdsourcing was new. And so it was one of the first crowdsourced disaster relief projects ever. And by doing that as a community together, we realized that all of the skills uh, that we have in building art projects and theme camps and community are immediately applicable to a whole bunch of different uh, types of situations uh, around the world. And so since then, over the last 13, 14 years, you know, there have been hundreds of projects that burners have done. Uh, that range the gamut of disaster relief to homelessness to permaculture to working with refugees to um, right now these artists in in the Dominican Republic and who are building these large metal structures uh, to sink in the ocean and regrow coral. And so really what Burners Without Borders is is an opportunity for burners to come together and look at what the reflection of the Burning Man principles and values mean to them uh, out in the world with other communities. And so, uh, you know, I think for us, um, our big goals in the next couple of years uh, as Burners Without Borders is really to focus on um, continuing to build resilient communities um, where, wherever people want to and supporting leaders in that, just like what's happening here with the Bay Area San Francisco Working Group. Um, we're also really focused right now on sustainability goals. Um, and so really thinking about how our overall culture um, can contribute to uh, what's happening with climate change. Uh, I think burners are really innovative. Uh, and so I think there's a lot of solutions there. And then, you know, as, as within this moment that is now, we're also really looking at what's going on with COVID-19. And so really kind of taking this moment to see how uh, a lot of cracks in the system are apparent. And so how do we take this moment where all of these cracks in the system are apparent and really look at how to respond as citizens um, and how to respond as activated community members? Because uh, one of the reasons Burns Without Borders was founded is really believing that there will never be enough government programs or non-for-profits to fix what's going on in the world. And so we really need to inspire everyday people to look around their own communities, uh, find what uh, doesn't feel right to them and start to create community-based solutions to them. And so I'm super excited to hear about uh, a couple of the projects today because I think the projects that we're gonna hear about are exactly in line with that. So thanks for letting me do a little intro and super excited to see what happens. Um, you know, I think that we all have these really big hearts and one thing that us burners have learned how to do is how to connect the dots. So um, Moxie and myself and CJ just kind of stepped into this and are super excited to connect the dots with all of you together. Um, so I want to introduce you to Wood Street. Um, it is a community of individuals who live in a creative housing uh, place. Basically, it's a homeless community at 2400 Wood Street in Oakland. And one of the people I want to introduce you to, her name is Maven and some of her friends. Um, She's coined the word curban, curb urban, as an alternative to using the word homeless um, for obvious reasons. So it's 29 acres. There's about 100 to 200 people currently living there. And this was one of the places that it was actually a homeless encampment. And then the city came in and cleaned everything out because it was bought by a company as 
I understand. And that company wasn't really able to do anything with the land because they couldn't get the people to leave. Many of these people had been there for six or seven years, have built structures and have lives there. Um, so now the city, I am told, is leasing it from a co the company and is telling people to go there. Um, they do, Maven has gotten portos and a bathroom truck that comes weekly. They do have trash pickup. The city is, I'm told, open to collaboration and ideas. Um, so we're going to go to the next slide. I'm going to introduce you to Maven and then we'll talk through a little bit more. We just wanted to give you a little taste on Maven because she, she's quite eccentric. She has quite a reputation. Um, and she has been to, she says, almost every burn except for last year, she spent it in Gerlach. Um, but you can see behind her, there are uh, lots of people there who are working on building up this area uh, as bars, as a stage, as a coffee house. Like they really have the creative energy. And I really want to encourage you all to watch this video um, afterwards because there's a man that she introduces, I think John is his name, who really uh, paints a different side of it. Um, so, so what are the goals, you may ask, when we are trying, trying to work at Wood Street? The first and foremost goal is just to go in and meet people, get to know them, create a relationship, to, to share a meal, to commune with them. Um, there's obviously a need for some help with minor trash cleanup and organization, repairing their structures or building new structures using materials on hand. You'll see in the video, there's lots and lots of materials on this land. And um, like I said, it's 29 acres. There's quite a bit of space. Some of it is fed land, some of it is state, and some of it is city. Um, and it butts up right next to the train tracks and the highway. Um, so we want to get to know this community and be of service, maybe do some education. Um, and really the idea is to just help recreate this narrative of what it means to be homeless and, and eradicate that word even. Let's go to the next slide, please, CJ. So helping them create their own vibe and making it um, open and, and not as intimidating to outsiders. Um, people want to feel good and they feel better when the environment is positive and in a positive environment means community. It means interacting with your neighbors. So there, it's right by uh, American Steel and Pacific Pipe. There's a recording studio over there. There's lots of neighbors that we could collaborate with. Obviously, this is an opportunity for a tiny home community um, with various structures. CJ will pick up on that in a little bit. Um, and there is already some of that happening with some tough sheds on the land that were built from a different project, if anyone remembers that. So long-term goals are to help them build a resource center, possibly. One of the biggest priorities is a bathroom, a bathhouse, possibly some sort of um, burner style bathhouse with compostable toilets, something like that, getting some solar, um, these are obviously really long-term lofty goals, but just we're trying to um, kind of set the stage. And these are all needs that came from Maven and her friends. Um, getting, helping them get some organization with the trash and with where um, materials and donations can get dropped off. Uh, maybe even a community garden if the uh, quality of the soil is acceptable or raised beds. Um, go ahead and hit, hit the next slide please. Um, so yeah, so the location is there. You can look it up on the map. And we are, we've created uh, this day of giving is what we would like to present to you all, um, where we're going to bring our tools, bring our hearts and our open minds, bring some food, um, and also to bring some of the care packages. Many of you know about the backpack program that um, Moxie has often run where um, we'll put some of those together. So we'll be creating an event page for that. And on the next slide, um, I kind of have just outlined some very basic needs for this day to happen. Um, we obviously, we, we would love it if we could have some help, if some people wanna step up and take on one of these 
specific roles, helping with promotions, not just like getting the word out to burners and creating that element, but also some hands-on at Wood Street, talking with the people who live there and making sure that they understand why we're coming and, and finding out more about what their needs are. Um, obviously when you bring in tools, when you're bringing in tools, we're gonna you know, need some people around that to keep track of that sort of thing. Um, if everyone could mute themselves, thank you. Um, so hospitality, we wanna bring food, we wanna have a barbecue, and then we wanna help with some organization. Um, and it, this isn't just like, let's come in and clean up all the trash because some of the trash is very strategic and there's lots of nuances around that I won't get into right now but we just want to be present and available. Um, and then of course, maybe have some entertainment, although I, they're very excited to provide the entertainment. So um, we might have like a DJ on standby, but I'd like to really give them permission to be creative. So if you're interested in leading one of these teams or collaborating, um, you can post it in the chat or message me or Moxie. If you could go to the next slide, please. Um, there are a few other ways to help just to touch on that. And this isn't just for Wood Street, but um, you know, we also want to collaborate with Amy as well. And if there's some way that we can, can um, be on similar paths with this, having a San Francisco and an Oakland, um, but we need some point people there to help. Um, because I live in Marin and I'm finding that I'm getting like donations and food and different things available. Just some other coordinating help would be wonderful. Um, one of the things that Maven has said the biggest need is, is to help transport some of these RVs that she's finding for free so that people can live in them. That is a um, it's a big project and would, we really wanna talk about that and get clear on what that would look like 501c3 donations, if, if um, that all looks all right to everybody. Um, another need is for uh, activities. So art supplies or like movie tickets are amazing. Um, and also items for pets, because there are pets there. There aren't any children there, I am told. Um, and then maybe down the line, like a storage container on site, um, also gift certificates to hotels, giving them a break would be an option. And of course, this is long down the road, but all of these things would be welcome. If you have these skills or have ideas, please let us know. Um, I think there's one more slide. Um, okay, so, so for Wood Street, thank you guys for listening. I, we really wanna honor that this is like bigger than us. Um, and this is maybe even a little bit um, intimidating, uh, going into the unknown and not knowing what it could be, but there's just a lot of trust that has to happen on both sides of this. And that's just what we're doing is exploring and building these relationships. We're not trying to jump right into anything crazy, um, but there's an opportunity for possibly artists to, to live there, for burners to park their cars, art cars there. I'm just throwing some of these ideas out there that Wood Street has told me they've been thinking. And so we wanna be careful to um, not throw anybody into anything that we haven't researched fully. But I just want to also say, I'm really looking forward to looking at Amy's SOS packet. I think that is going to help us with this project as well. And yeah, thank you guys for listening. I hope that was clear and I hope you watch the video. Cool, thank you, Sarah. Can everybody hear me okay? Yes. So Moxie's audio has died, so um, I'm gonna take over the next part that she was gonna do. But basically here is the main projects that we want to work on as the BWBSF group. Um, so Wood Street is a huge part of it. Um, also the, the example that Amy gave of the space that might become something similar is, is also great. Um, we really wanna work on micro homes and building them and giving them to people who need them and doing events and fundraising, which is a huge, huge need if we're gonna do these big projects that have a meaningful impact. 
Um, and then doing care packages. So care packages, this is one that I've done before. Um, in Sacramento, I did a bunch of these. We used to do them every month. We would meet up and put together these packages with different things that people need, just the basic essentials, um, and then hand them out. Or more often people would have them to give someone if they ask for money, just leave them in the car and then hand them to people that are standing on the corner. Um, and there's been a lot of research on what things are ideal to include what things people really need, what people want. Really with backpacks. Um, so this is a project that Moxie's leading. Unfortunately, again, her audio has cut out. Um, and the big one that I'm working on um, is this one, doing micro homes. And so we have lots of different points that we want to touch on. For example, just basic shelter. Um, a lot of people who die experiencing homelessness in San Francisco, it's from exposure and that's just not acceptable in the right. richest city in the world. So uh, it's really easy to do this. And this picture is an artist from Oakland who makes them and has been doing so for years. And um, he said that these ones in the picture cost between 30 and $50 and it's mostly recycled material. And he's one of many people encouraging wheels because wheels prevent theft by the police. Even now, during the lockdown in San Francisco, the Department of Public Works is still stealing shelters and warm clothes from homeless people who are literally dying in the streets of not just exposure, but also COVID-19. And so adding wheels to these shelters is one way that we can um, give them the ability to escape from the police stealing their shelter. Um, and this is a, a, ta a tactic that has been explored in other cities who have done very similar work to this. Um, and there's lots more information about similar projects elsewhere on the website. Um, so we can continue conversation about that with whoever wants to be involved in this part of the project. But basically, we just want to make sure that locking, insulated, include something for them to sleep on. Um, and we want to put together a team that is going to research what are the needs, what do they want, what works, what, has, what have other people tried, what lessons did they learn, and then designing them and um, doing the construction. Um, we also want to do events and fundraising events, especially. This is something that Wood Street has asked us to do there. And um, I also work at Comfort and Joy. I have for, for several years, this is something we do all the time, big events to raise money. Um, you know, lots of different groups that are very adjacent have lots of different kinds of experience with doing fundraising events. So this is something we definitely um, need help with because it's going to cost money to do all these projects. Um, so we're also looking for people who want to work on an events and fundraising team and put together the programming, put together the marketing and make these events happen so that we can raise money to build homes and do the care packages. So the big ask that we have um, is just that you check out our website, which is bwbsf.org. And um, the front page of the website, it asks for just your name and email. And then there's a checkbox for each of the projects. So whichever one you're interested in having more information about, um, if you can fill that out, we'll be able to send you information, put together the team with who wants to volunteer, and then um, take the next steps going forward. So we also have a Facebook group, which is public. You should be able to find it. Um, the exact name of it is here, and it's the group that created the event that um, everyone saw that they got the Zoom link on. So it's all right there. If you'd like to join, then we can continue the conversation there too. Um, and we're also doing a fundraiser and the link for that will also be in the Facebook group and on the website. 